So it looks like Minecraft of all games is actually going to be getting ray tracing. Yes, you heard it here. It is going to be getting ray tracing. Now, unfortunately, of course, ray tracing is only going to be possible on PC because current gen consoles, unfortunately, do not support ray tracing. So if you are on PC, you will be able to test this out in the upcoming weeks. It looks like uh, Minecraft uh, will be getting ray tracing in beta later this week and you can test this out uh, for yourself. Of course, does a game like Minecraft actually need something like ray tracing? Of course, it doesn't need anything like ray tracing for a game that's very simple and not too graphic demanding, but just the fact it is getting it, it will make the game a little bit more prettier to actually look at. Now, if you're unfamiliar with ray tracing ray tracing is pretty much a technology that allows certain shadows to really stand out in video games when certain shadows hit certain like uh, objects in a video game and i will say if ray tracing is done right in certain games it can look fantastic and here's what the actual picture looks like if you want to see what ray tracing could look like on uh, Minecraft and I do know there has been some mods throughout the years that really do make Minecraft look a little bit nicer and a little bit more prettier than what it already looks like so this is probably nothing new to a lot of people who mod Minecraft or get all these texture packs for Minecraft to make the game look different but just the fact that it is coming to the official game is going to be nice of course you do have to be on one of the newer uh, you do have to be on one of the newer uh, graphic cards I think that the uh, 2000 series graphics cards to really t to really uh, utilize ray tracing, but here is a uh, ray uh, here it is off and here it is on, and you can see it definitely looks better when I slide this far out. There it is off and there it is on, and you can see those lighting effects do look flat out fantastic for Minecraft. Of course, anything that makes a game look prettier is always welcome. But again, of course, Minecraft is a game that really never needed. Uh, ray tracing to begin with since it was never a graphical powerhouse and it never uh, one of its primary goals was never about graphics in the first place it was always about gameplay first and it was always a game that always looked a little bit retro for the most part but like i said it is a nice thing that a developer is finally going to be focusing more a little bit on ray tracing and this is actually nice that they are working officially on ray tracing for minecraft because of course next generation is already confirmed to have a uh, ray tracing capabilities like the ps5 and the xbox series x so if they can get this rolled out they can polish this up and they can make minecraft have ray tracing that means most likely when minecraft does come to next gen consoles because without a doubt it's one of those games that always gets ported to everything so it, of course it'll be ported to xbox uh, series x and the ps5 then later down the road it might actually get ray tracing and i'm actually curious to see how different developers out there in the gaming industry are actually going to utilize uh, ray tracing because I think, like I said before, ray tracing is just one of those technologies where I really do feel like a lot of devs can actually make games stand out by having good lighting effects, good ray tracing effects, and overall ray tracing can actually li liven up a game, so I'm very curious to see the direction of uh, ray tracing, and overall, what I can say is from a lot of these pictures, there's even more pictures at the bottom, it really does look pretty nice for a game like Minecraft, and I really don't have... Uh, any complaints here and it will be just nice to even have it in the game if you're uh if you're if your pc could even handle uh ray tracing uh to begin with now moving on to another story this story is about the nintendo switch and it's honestly nothing new you probably already heard about this but the nintendo switch just got updated to firmware 10.0 and there is some pretty nice things in firmware 10.0 usually in the last couple of updates that nintendo has been releasing for the nintendo switch we really haven't got anything they mostly been like patches to improve stability of the uh, nintendo switch and there's nothing there i know why nintendo does that not just for the stability of this of the Nintendo Switch, but also due to the fact that they're trying to keep, keep hackers from hacking uh, the Nintendo Switch, of course. So even though they say they're just doing improvements to the system uh, stability, they're not really just doing uh, improvements to the system stability behind the scenes. Most likely, they're patching some uh, stuff out of the code, so it will be harder for hackers to actually hack their systems, and that does make sense. But this one is actually a pretty noticeable 
uh, upgrade for the Nintendo Switch. It's not going to blow you away with features. There's nothing like like uh, mind-blowing in this uh, update or anything like that. I know a lot of people out there wanted themes for the Nintendo Switch. They also wanted things like folders for the Nintendo Switch because other consoles have had that, like the Wii U and the 3DS. I know the 3DS got themes, and then the Wii U did get folders, and the 3DS got folders, so it's like, why won't they bring those uh, to the Nintendo Switch? But Nintendo kind of already confirmed why they won't bring things like themes to the Nintendo Switch because they keep claiming that if they add themes to the Nintendo Switch it may bog down the UI and you guys know if you ever use the Nintendo Switch the Switch has one of the fastest UIs out there on the market when it comes to a modern day console nothing really beats the Nintendo Switch it's fluid it's fast it, it, it is a very simple and clean uh, user interface but I guess that's the way Nintendo wanted they wanted to make sure that your experience was nice because it's all about playing games it's not really about the menus and since you're most likely going to be playing games they wanted to make sure you'd be able to get in and out of games fast get in in and out of menus uh pretty fast so that's why we don't have themes on the Ninten nintendo switch apparently and let's talk about all these features that nintendo is actually adding in this brand new update uh for the uh nintendo switch let's start off with some of the stuff that's not too noted notable first off we did get new theme our new uh new uh user icons for uh, Animal Crossings for your profile. So if you have a profile now, you can go ahead and go to the icons and mess around with some new Animal Crossing, new Horizon icons, which is always nice when they always want to give us these brand new uh, these brand new icons for, for uh, Switch profiles. And then outside of that, another nice feature that we did get are one that's actually going to be pretty useful is the fact that now you can actually switch games from the internal memory to an SD card or an SD card to... Uh, I think uh, the internal memory without having to re-download the game. I've actually done this in the past a couple of times and it was kind of annoying. I had to delete the game completely and then reinstall the game and you guys know how how some nintendo switch games are very big they're gigabytes in size and it can take a little while to actually download a game so i am actually very happy that nintendo is actually allowing you to do this one reason you would actually want to do this is for games that actually uh for games that you want to utilize the fastest speed. If you didn't know this, the Nintendo Switch is actually a console where the internal memory is actually faster than any SD card support just because the internal memory is actually directly on the Nintendo Switch. So so games te technically load fast, or they do load faster if you're using the internal memory. So maybe you have like a game like Breath of the Wild you want to put on the internal memory, but then somehow, for instance, it just takes too much space, so you want to swap it with something else and put it on the internal memory. There is actually a reason to do that, or maybe you never got a uh, SD card to begin with, so you put a lot of stuff on the internal memory, but the internal memory is full. Then you can move those games to the SD card because you do have to remember too that the Nintendo Switch only saves like game saves to the internal memory, and if your internal memory is full, you will be out of luck if you want to save your progress in games when it comes to the Nintendo Switch. Overall, that is a nice little quality of life improvement that Nintendo actually rolled out. Unfortunately, even though we do have uh, switching actual di uh, digital games from uh, SD card to memory and memory to SD card, unfortunately we cannot still back up our game saves directly to like an SD card and things like that. We're unfortunately still uh, out of luck. Maybe this is a sign that Nintendo is actually going to be uh, updating the Switch later on to actually have that support because I do know things like the Wii U for instance, you can actually back up your game saves to like an SD external hard drive or even to a flash drive i had done it in the past with my uh, nintendo wii u so it's kind of strange that we still don't have that feature on the nintendo switch local backup saves for your game saves and then of course the biggest new feature here besides that whole bookmark thing that nintendo actually added uh to the news where now you can bookmark your favorite articles which is not really too useful i don't know who really cares about that i guess it's nice but i personally don't really care about that but the biggest thing they added to this update which is actually super good i don't think anyone's going to disagree here it's actually very good did we need it we didn't necessarily need it but i will say it is a very nice uh thing on the nintendo switch we now have button remapping which is actually nice this is not a new thing for game consoles or just things in general but it is nice to have button remapping so now you can pretty much uh, remap any button on any of the standard controllers 
for the Ninten Nintendo Switch. So for instance, the Joy-Cons and the Pro Controller, even if you have one single Joy-Con, you can see from this image right here, let's go ahead and uh, make the image a little bit better, bigger. You can see that you can change pretty much every button on your Nintendo Switch's uh, Joy-Con or Pro Controller, which is actually very nice. And you can even change the, uh, the, this, the, the direction of the Switch uh, Pro Controller. You can see here it does say display horizontally, and that's actually very good, especially if you're playing with two individual Joy-Cons, one for you and one for your friend. That is going to be nice. This is actually very nice for a lot of different reasons. Maybe there's a game you just don't find the controls very comfortable, so it is nice to be able to remap all of that. Or another very useful thing for this would actually be, for instance, let's say one of your buttons on your Nintendo Switch controller is actually broken. For whatever the case may be, you can remap it to another button so you can continue on playing your game without having to buy a brand new controller because, let's face it, uh, Nintendo Switch uh, controllers in general whether it's the pro controller or the uh, joy cons are just very expensive so it is always nice to have those those uh this button remapping and also for people who have like problems with their hand for instance and you you may want to remap it because you can't reach certain buttons on the switch controller or whatever the case may be or maybe you just want to mess around with different options and like have fun and things like that i really do think this is uh useful overall i think it's a very good update especially with change button mapping without change button mapping honestly the new firmware firmware 10.0 would honestly be not that useful to be honest but this one is actually a pretty cool feature and it's cool you can remap pretty much anything you want even the share button if you want to remap the share button i don't know why you would want to remap the share button but hey it is an option if you want to remap that button as well there's nothing off limits here oh and also the nice thing about button remapping on the switch is the fact that you can have different profiles already set so you don't have to keep remapping stuff for different games and different applications you can go to uh, your settings and then click on just different profile sets that you already have set so if you want to name one like one for smash one for mario kart one for a different game you'll have them already and you can have up to five in uh, your nintendo switch at all times if you want to switch between those and of course you can just set it back to uh, standard settings if you don't like any of those uh options or you don't really want to play around with the actual uh the actual button remapping and then the last one for today is actually going to be about some earbuds and these aren't your standard earbuds these are some pretty interesting earbuds and apparently they're going to be coming from a company called razor i'm pretty sure it's the same razor company that does make gaming peripherals for pc and uh, i think i think gaming laptops so it's very interesting to see this company razor actually make these earbuds because like i said they're not your standard earbuds and most likely no one could have predicted a company like razor to actually make these uh type of earbuds. So basically before I talk about these earbuds, the actual design of these earbuds, these earbuds are going to be earbuds that are going to be a true wireless earbuds. So they're going to be the ones that you put in both ears. Honestly, looking at this picture, they really do remind me of AirPods. It pretty much looks like an AirPods uh, rip off. If I'm just being 100% honest, they look like the type of earbuds that actually stick out of your uh, stick out of your ear just like the ear pods of course it makes sense to rip off the ear pods because the ear pod the the air pods are so uh, recognizable they're the air they're the true wireless earbuds that practically everybody uses so it does make sense that a company like razor would want to knock off those uh, specific headphones but let's talk about these headphones when you see these headphones you're going to be like wow what kind of headphones are these so basically these are going to be themed headphones and these are some themes that you probably never expected. They're themed after Pokemon, yes. You can see them right here. Other than that, I honestly wouldn't have even covered this because let's be honest, there's nothing special about these, these headphones outside of the theme of them. But with that theme going on, they are pretty nice looking headphones to be honest, especially if you're a Pokemon fan or if you just want something to stand out. Now, I will say the actual headphones aren't anything too crazy you're probably really going to be buying these headphones most likely for the pokeball the pokeball is going to be the charging case for these uh, headphones of course you can see it looks like a pokeball and it is cool you can carry this around it's most likely almost everyone carries their airpods or their true wireless earbuds around with them in their pocket and things like that so you can see it does have a lanyard a lanyard on the pokeball you can probably clip it to your belt or clip it to your backpack if you want to do that and uh, 
It's actually interesting too that they're taking cues from uh, Pikachu. You can see they have the yellow design. Honestly, for some reason, this picture right here keeps reminding me of something like a, a gold color rather than a yellow color that Pikachu is traditionally. For some reason, this is, is, is more, to me, this looks more like a kind of a goldish color. I don't know why that is, but you can see it's kind of like a yellowish, goldish color right there. At the ends, it does have Pikachu. No, nothing. With these headphones, honestly, if you just saw them in public, you'd probably say, oh, those are just AirPod ripoffs because that's practically what they look like. But if, you, if you've seen the Pokeball and you've seen someone put it in the Pokeball, that's when you know they're Pikachu-themed uh, earbuds. But without that, it's hard to tell that they're even uh, Pokemon-themed uh, Pokemon uh, headphones. Now, going back to the article, it does say they don't have really good battery life and they are kind of expensive and it looks like they'll be launching in China. I don't know if they're going to get a worldwide release, but right now it does state they are going to be launching in China for roughly $120. So you can see these things aren't the most expensive headphones on the market for uh, true wireless earbuds, but they're also not the most cheapest things as well. $120, of course, is still going to be $120 and they're going to be releasing on April 16th they do say that the earbuds actually get pretty bad battery life it looks like they only get three hours per charge on the battery and if you compare that to other headphones around that price and things like that three hours is absolutely bad and horrible but again you're most likely buying these headphones to be honest for the uh, pokemon theme right there you're not going to be buying these headphones for uh, anything else i can see why because the battery life is bad they probably don't sound the greatest as well but overall these are just some very interesting headphones and it's always cool to see companies i guess really stand out from one another instead of just making a generic product they didn't just make a generic product here they really tried to uh, appeal to those people who really like pokemon and really like pokeballs and pikachu and things like that so just very interesting to see these themed headphones which are probably not going to be headphones for everybody and something that i honestly probably wouldn't recommend just because battery life is bad and and they're not going to sound all the greatest. It's more of like a collector's item actually instead of just like something you would actually use for day-to-day -day use if you needed something like wireless earbuds. I just couldn't see you actually getting invested in this. Although they're probably still functional and they're probably still going to sound somewhat decent even if you did want to use these full-time. Which I'm assuming someone's going to buy these and want to use them uh, full-time. And there's actually nothing wrong with that. It's just that uh, you will have some sacrifices to be made with these headphones. And yeah, that's pretty much going to be it for this uh video anyway guys this is wayne from my tech news signing out